Hello, my name is Brad Langdell, and are, are you a fan of, like, vintage things, things from the past? Well, then you'll like this physics problem, because you're going to use some ideas from the past. We're going to talk about charged particles in uniform electric fields. Those are probably new, and we're going to talk about a blast from the past, projectile motion. This is a tough question. It's got, like, 72 steps, so you can stop, you can go back, you can check things out again if you need to. Let's try it out. So we've got a small positive charge. And we know what the mass of the charge is, 5 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms. It's going at 350 meters per second into a parallel plate capacitor. I'm going to show you the picture for that here in a second. kind of looks like this, okay? Now, the separation between the plates is 5.5 centimeters, and the potential difference between the plates is 1,000 volts. The charge on that particle is positive 3 microcoulombs. Assuming it starts right at the top of the capacitor, uh, how far from the entrance does it move before it hits the bottom? Now this is a pretty tricky question. They, they've told you how far vertically this particle is going to go. It's going to drop down through 5.5 centimeters. But what they want to know is how far does it go horizontally? And if you're looking at this and saying this diagram looks kind of familiar, that's good because this is going to go through projectile motion. It's going to make a parabola in this uniform electric field. And so this problem is going to walk you through the steps for how to figure out how far this object goes horizontally, how far it goes displacement in the x direction, kind of like we called it back in physics 20. Okay, there's my really horrible dx. Okay, lots of steps, but the basic idea is very similar to everything we've been working on in this unit. So I've got my diagram drawn and labeled, and I want to think a little bit about the fact that this is uniform motion in the x direction and accelerated motion in the y direction, classic projectile motion sort of stuff. Now, if you're looking for some more um, videos on projectile motion, I'll put a link to that so you can check it out here and see uh, how to do that from back in Physics 20. Now what I want to start doing is thinking a little bit about what have I got for variables? What can I work with here? What can I do with these variables? Well, the first thing I notice is I've got potential difference and the distance between the plates. If I take those two, I can combine them to find the electric field strength. Okay, so that's going to be my first little calculation I could do. Now, I know that doesn't seem like it's going to help me figure out how far this particle goes, but it's something I could try, and I would get a number, and maybe it would help me out. So if I take the potential difference of 1,000 volts, divide it by the separation between the plates, I get the electric field. Great, there's the electric field this particle is moving through. Maybe that will help somehow. Okay, what can I do next? Well, I know electric field now, and I know charge. From electric field and charge, I can go through and find electric force. And so I've got a little calculation for that down there as well. Again, it's kind of funny because you might think to yourself, that electric force isn't going to help me. I'm not looking for the electric force. I'm actually looking for how far it goes. But again, it's something you can just kind of work out. So here I went and worked it out, and I found that if I substituted in the electric field and the charge on that particle, I could find the electric force the particle moves through. Okay, well now what can I do? Well, I know force and I know mass. Thinking back to physics 20, force and mass fit into Newton's second law and allow me to go through and do a calculation to find acceleration. So I substituted into Newton's second law, the force that I just calculated along with the mass of the particle, I found its acceleration. Now this is going to be its vertical acceleration again because the y dimension is the accelerated dimension and the x dimension is just uniform motion. So I know the acceleration in the y direction. Okay, what can I do for with acceleration in the y direction and how far the particle moves in the y direction? Well, this is where physics 20 comes in handy. I can calculate how long it takes the particle to move through these parallel plates. I'm using a kinematics formula here. And this is the same kinematics formula we used back in physics 20, d equals vit plus 1 half at squared. The initial velocity in the y direction is 0. It's not 350, that's the x direction. We're talking about the y direction here, the vertical, the accelerated motion. So I put a 0 in for that velocity. I know how far the particle is going to move vertically, 0 0.055 meters. I know the acceleration vertically, and I can go through and solve for the time, 0 0.0318 seconds. Now we're getting somewhere, because if I know how long the particle is in this electric field for, I can now go and do my uniform motion in the x direction. I can calculate how far it goes into the capacitor. Here I'm using the uniform motion formula, v equals d over t. I just rearranged it, d equals v times t, multiplied the horizontal speed and the time, figure out how far it goes in. 
that's a lot of steps. And so one of the things I'm thinking through when I'm working these problems is not necessarily what of, are all the steps I have to do all at once. I'm just doing one little thing at a time, baby steps. I'm trying to figure out one variable from another and just seeing where that path leads me. It takes practice, but with a bit of practice, you can get pretty good at these kinds of problems. For more problems like this, uh, and for some notes on this as well, you can check out my website, www.ldindustries.ca.